So just to get us all on the same page, I want to define what I believe shamanism is. Shamanism is the reverence of nature. So Christians worship Christ and Buddhists worship Buddha. And in shamanism, we worship nature. Why? Why would anyone worship or revere anything? Because whatever it is that we're revering, that we're worshiping, it has something for us. It teaches something about ourselves. And nature teaches us who we are to be. Nature is a template through which we understand how we are to live as humans. So if you take a forest and you just leave that forest alone, just to do its thing, that forest will continue an endless process of growth and creation, growth and creation. That is the energy of nature. And even though there might be species that fight with each other or seasons will come and go, maybe there's a drought or a brush fire, the overall directionality of nature, the energy of nature is always leading toward growth and creation. Now, why would anything just want to keep going like that? experience more of itself? What would be in the intentionality underneath that to just celebrate and experience more of itself, however it can? Love. And the energy of nature from the earth-based traditions is one of love. Love as the organizing principle on the planet, that which makes the whole thing go. And so what we're doing in shamanism, what we're doing in shamanic thinking, in shamanic healing, is that we are uh, uh, gaining those things that help us move towards our own individual creation or removing that which blocks us toward our growth and creation. So there, there's so many books written about shamanic healing. And, and the more I do it, the more simple it becomes. We're either putting back in that which obscures our nature, nature being that uh, intentionality towards love and growth and creation, or we're, we're removing that which uh, allows us to move in that direction. So that is the energy of nature. That's what we're looking at. That's what we're revering in nature. There are so many things that are common to the human experience that are not a part of nature. So many things that are not mirrored in nature. Low self-esteem, not mirrored in nature. Sexual repression, not mirrored in nature. The hoarding of wealth, not mirrored in nature. Denying what is good for us or leading towards our growth and development, not mirrored in nature. Nature teaches us holism, non-separation, a, a sense of the entire thing working together, you know, I watched a, a documentary the other night, and uh, there are these huge swaths of algae that you can see from space in the, in the oceans, these green swaths of algae that provide 50% of the oxygen of the Earth. And this algae is born of dolphin excrement. That's what fertilizes this algae. So every other breath you take <laughs> comes from the excrement of dolphins. That's how connected we are. That is the energy of nature. And to know that your own individual growth and creation is supported by that interconnection. So what it is that you yearn for, what it is that you desire, what it is that you want to create, it's already a part of you because there's only the one thing happening. And that's what nature teaches us that each of us is just a, a single aperture through which the one thing experiences itself, as is exemplified by that vast interconnectivity of nature. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, what about the spiritual part? And that's there too, because from a shamanic perspective, the spirits, the helping spirits, those beings that hover around the planet that want to help us, we have no other intentionality except to help us lead toward our growth and creation. That's why they're there. That's why they, they decided to stick around. They, to the shamanic practitioner or the shamanic mind, 
are as real as the rainforests. They are part of that interconnection. They are already a part of us. They are part of the oneness. So when we move towards our own individual growth and creation, we get all kinds of help. And when we don't, they're just kind of quiet. And in this workshop, we're going to be working directly with them. Now, let me say one more thing about shamanism that's very important. Shamanism is not ascendant. It's not transcendent. Shamanism was developed for practical purposes, to find food and medicine, to live well, to live with enough, to live with a sense of abundance. That's what it was developed for. It's an embodied path, not an ascended one. So in shamanism, it is about harmonizing with this life. It is not about transcending anything, which leads me toward a very important component of shamanism, and that is darkness. Now, there are plenty of things in nature, because we're emulating nature in this work, right? And there are plenty of things in nature that we don't like. We don't like the great white sharks. We don't like the tarantulas. We don't like the cockroaches. We don't like the parasites. And yet, we would never think they're not supposed to be there. And it's so important that you know that your own darkness, your own version of your own cockroaches and great white sharks and, and, and tarantulas, which may look like your anger or your lust or your greed or your hatred or your fear, those things are supposed to be there. They're not running the show, but they're there. When you think of who I think is one of the uh, most amazing shamans of the 20th century, Carl Jung, what was he getting at with his process of individuation? He was saying that we don't escape the darkness, but that we actually acknowledge, accept the darkness inside of us, bring it to the light so that we can see it for what it is, shine a light on it and integrate it. And so those things in you that you, you wish weren't there from a shamanic perspective are directional. Your anger, directional. It's saying I know, boundaries being crossed. Even something as unattractive as jealousy. Jealousy is saying, is saying I, I want what that guy has. That's directional. That's part of your growth and creation. So we don't, in shamanism, we don't pull away from those things, but rather we honor them and we acknowledge them. They don't run our show, but we're aware of them. And so it's about becoming real. This, this work is about becoming real with yourself, harmonizing with your life and legitimizing, giving clout to what it is that you desire and you want. Now there's a lot of talk about spiritual materialism and I wanna just sort of address that. From my perspective as a professional healer, having seen people over and over and over again get better, because healing is like a thing, like healing is real, it really does happen. And what I find over and over and over again is that when people do get better, when, they, when, when they're touched by spirit, when they heal in some way, the inevitable response is to pay it forward to the collective. And so to be in abundance is to say, I can't help but, I can't help but give. And so to not deny yourself, but to acknowledge what it is that you want, to go after what it is that you want, to manifest what it is that you want. And so much of what we're going to be doing uh, over this course is about the alchemy of manifestation. It's about so you can be so full, you can't help but. And who helps you do that? Shamanism, certainly the practices, but the shaman. So what, what, who is the shaman? We all individually have our own version of this being inside of us, but the shaman is the one that helps us move towards our nature. Our nature, nature being simply that uh, expression of growth and creation. So the shaman is the being who helps us align with and heal the relationship that we have between our mind and our body, between ourselves and others, between others and others and between everyone and the planet. And why? Because the ultimate goal of the shaman is the stewardship of the earth. So I'm not a shaman, I am a sh shamanic practitioner. And I can tell you that if I had to explain to you how I organize my practice, it's about someone comes in 
with a, the proverbial tack in their foot, whatever that thing is, and we remove that tack together because that's the tack that's taking them away from their growth and creation. And when that tack is removed, they immediately want to pay it forward. I've seen it over and over and over again. And each of you who are watching this course, you have a gift. You have a special sauce. You have something inside of you that is supposed to be for the collective. And if, there, if you're too mired in your own stuff, in your own uh, withholding of yourself, in your own limiting beliefs, you won't ever get there. And this material is about you getting there about helping you align with yourself and your journey. So the Hawaiians, uh, as, as I mentioned in the, in the intro session, one of the ethics, one of, one of the uh, major tenets of uh, Hawaiian cosmology is this idea of aloha. And aloha is about alo, alo, alo face to face, face to face with ha, breath face-to-face -face with the natural world, face-to-face -face with others, and face-to-face -face with ourselves. So the Hawaiians have a phrase called aloha ma, and that is self-reflective love, which they consider to be, in some ways, the highest value. There's an, an, a, a Hawaiian adage, I won't give you the Hawaiian because I don't remember it, but, it, but the, the translation is to love oneself as one loves God, to love oneself as one loves God. And in doing that, from a shamanic perspective and from a Hawaiian perspective, we make ourselves more God-like, like those beings, part of the natural world who are hovering around the planet, just wanting to help. And so the more that we love ourselves, the more that we too become like them and we just want to help. Even contemporary brain science, uh, talks about the new human brain that's developing is one that, that, that is just wired towards empathy, wired towards compassion. And the brain that's dying out is the one that's more reptilian and believes in separation and, and, uh, and fear and scarcity. And all the difficulty that's happening on the planet right now is because this new brain, this new brain is developing and this potential in all of us to be more godlike so that we can give back to the collective is the invitation right now. And this material not only can help you do it, it's the reason why it exists. So know that nature not only loves you and wants to communicate with you and is alive and conscious, and one of the exercise you're, exercises you're going to do in between sessions is to go into nature and actually feel that and communicate with nature. But you, in and of, of yourself, are a living being of nature. And what surges through you is the yearning, the intentionality, the soul's purpose towards your own growth and creation. And what we're going to do during this course is get rid of anything all the crap that is in, in, not in alignment with that. So that you can harmonize in abundance with your life, with the gods, and with your purpose.